All right, welcome back to The Morning Beat now. We are gagging for this next guest. You know him, you love him as an Olympic bronze medalist figure skater. He's beautiful on the outside. He's also beautiful on the inside. Uh, please welcome to the show, Adam Rippon. Thank you so much for being here. We're super excited to have you. Thanks, babe. Oh, it's my pleasure, you guys. How are you? Good, good. We were just we're talking living. before. We're um, living. For our listeners know we're recording our show via Zoom at home right now, and you also have been cutting your own hair. You have a little bit of a hair flip on the bang um, how's quarantine treating you? Um, you know, it looks like um, uh, AJ and I have matching hair flips. Okay. Um, Cute. Uh, I actually have naturally curly hair, like super curly hair. It looks like gift wrap. Um, <laughs> but like, um, I some would get Brazilian blowouts to like, get, like yes, yeah, to be straighter. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you for your um, the only straight part about us, baby. Those Brazilian yeah, waxes. It's the Brazilians <laughs> and, and blowouts. The, well, you're it's totally the waxes, giving me. Yeah. You, you know the um, the cartoon Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. You know the little guy with like the little yellow hair and the hat. The, the elf. Uh, I'm an elf. Totally. Yeah. Thank you're, you. You're, yeah. <laughs> Um, Adam, I want to ask you, I don't want to intimidate you, but before we like get into really some serious stuff, um, I got roller skates on Amazon. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Right? Yeah. So I am intimidated now. But if okay, you I do continue. see me literally rolling down the street, I don't, don't stop me. Just admire. Okay. okay. That's it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, uh, question. Are they blades or skates? Like four wheels or like a straight track? I, I felt like blading down West Hollywood would be too much, right? Yeah. So I, I just do the four wheels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. It, it makes people feel like they still have a chance when I pass them going past pavilions and there's just lines. Right. Well, yeah. they still have a chance. I love, thank you for thinking of other people. In well, Adam, I'm curious, did you, were, were you ever, <laughs> did you start as a roller skater? Because my ex was a world champion roller skater. I had no idea this oh, wow. even exists. I know Tara Lipinski started that way. Were you ever a roller skater when you were younger before you got into ice skating? No, I was a baseball player. And oh. Stop! Then, yeah, I know. I did stop. <laughs> Were you a, a pitcher, a catcher, a shortstop? Like, what'd you, what was your position? I was the outfield, the daisy picker. Do you think oh. anything got out to the outfields when you're playing baseball Honey. when you're six years old? Girl, can I tell Thanks. you, true story, my Thanks. uncle Tom was a police officer of the Toledo Police Department, Toledo, Ohio. When I was a kid, he came to watch me play baseball one time, and all I did was pick dandelions in the outfield and practice my cartwheels. I can totally relate. <laughs> yeah. I asked my mom, like, what do people look like when they faint? Because I thought that my grand plan was I was going to faint in the outfield, and they'd be like, oh, he just doesn't have what it takes. Wow. It's is this the cast of League of Their Own or what? Am I right? <laughs> um, okay, so you do – but you became uh, this, like, like, this Olympic incredible voice for our community and for the skate community, like – how does it feel now when you look back? Did you realize you were making history? No. <laughs> it feels good. Um, I think, like, I was, I went to the Olympics, like, a lot later in my career. So I was 28, and, like, my teammates were 17 and 18. Oh, wow. And it's, uh, to, to go for the first time in your late 20s is not the norm, um, and I think I just had a greater perspective of like what I wanted to get out of sports and my whole experience of being like an Olympian. Um, and I knew I kind of at that point that it was the Olympics was more than just a competition. It was like a chance for you to really kind of show who you are to the world. And so I wanted to use that opportunity and to, to show who I was. And I think that meant just like answering uh, like doing interviews more casually, really just having fun with every experience I was doing because it is it is a once in a lifetime experience and opportunity. And I think when I was able to do that, um, I think a lot of athletes aren't comfortable enough in their own skin and they're so focused on what they want to get done there that they aren't able to focus on the bigger picture of what the whole experience um, can be and not should be because everybody's experience is going to be different um, to uh, what they want to get out of it. But I knew when I was there, I wanted my experience to be one that I came away from and was like, I was completely myself. I um, was honest in every interview and I was really fucking good. So that was all I wanted to do. Yes. Where did that come from for you? Who had still that in you? Did, did it come from, you know, a mentor in your life, a, 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 a parental figure, a teacher, a coach? 
Um, I think, so 2018 was the third games that I, I tried to qualify for. So in 2010, I was like an up and comer and was like, oh, I have an outside shot if like three people break their legs and one person just forgets where the event is. So I was like, <laughs> I <can go." laughs> um, and then in 2014, it, that felt like the perfect time for me to go. I would be like 24. Um, that's like prime age. Um, and I didn't go and I didn't skate very, very well, to, uh, like at the whole qualifying season. Is that like Evan Lysacek, Johnny Weir season? Or is that, that like was, um, a little bit before? Evan Lysacek, Johnny Weir was like 2010. Got it. And so 2014, there was like, uh, the, the Olympic team was Jeremy Abbott and Jason Brown. That's right. Yep. Oh. And so, oh, oh please continue. I have no, but by the time, it, by the time you actually got to like find that opportunity and find your voice, uh, what had changed in you? Well, I think it was not going and having so many friends at that point who had gone and had success were either Olympic champions or were Olympic medalists or Olympians and from all sorts of different sports as well. Cause I had been still training back and forth between LA and, um, uh, the Olympic training center in Colorado Springs. So I've met a lot of different athletes. Um, and, and just to kind of know that like, yes, they go to the Olympics, but they come back and, you know, if they stop competing, it's, they just move on from it. It doesn't really define or dictate their whole entire life afterwards. Um, or, or if they continue also, it doesn't dictate their, like, it doesn't dictate their life afterwards. They still have the same goals. Like they were the same exact people who they were before they went. And once I realized that, I realized that like I was just putting so much pressure on this one, one event in this one two week experience, which in theory was all that it was. It's just a two week experience. It's incredible. It's amazing. But um, I had to just really break it down to like what what was it actually? It was mm -hmm. just another competition. And when I was able to do that, it made it seem not as big. Um, but I also think that like in the long run, I'm, I've been able to do that with other things of like meeting other people or having other experiences that I can break it down now mm -hmm. so that it never becomes something like, okay, it's now or never. It's always now or never. Yeah, I love that. Well, it, it kind of feels like in this pandemic, a now or never situation. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I want to talk about your new show on Quibi and of course your IT live show with Michelle Collins. But I want to ask you, what would it take uh, for you to feel safe to return to Olympic Village post pandemic as we're kind of trying to reopen, but things are still really scary? Well, you know, it's funny because like the the Olympic village is so f interesting because like I was, I shared a room with like five other people. Mm. So I, when I think of like returning to competition, I don't even just think about like, um, and, and you know, a lot of the athletes are healthy. That doesn't um, protect them from possibly, um, you know, contracting the virus. It doesn't um, protect them from, being sick, even even if some of them are asymptomatic, it's the the whole the the officials are older. All of our coaches are older. Um, like th those people are at risk. I don't I don't see a world right now where we go back to events the way that they were with like full arenas filled with people. Um, and even more so than that, like the traveling right now still seems so. Um, so distant in the future of like how we would be able to do that again. And I think that we'd be putting so many people at risk at, at, at this moment, which I think is an excellent reason of why the 2020 games have been postponed until 2021. Um, you know, like my heart goes out to those athletes, but it's for the, it's absolutely for the best. You know, you don't want to go to the Olympics and then you come away and you know, a bunch of people you've worked with have become very sick. Like that's not, that's not the experience that, that you want to have. So to, to, for like me as an athlete, what would make me feel comfortable? 
I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think a lot I know, of people don't know. I know. Right now. That's that's sort of the issue, but that's a very honest answer. I love that. Um, I also love what you're doing right now. Uh, you've got a new show on Quibi called Useless Celebrity History. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm full of all sort of sort of like I'm not smart, but I have a lot of useless trivia in my brain. Is this me the show for me and why? <laughs> um, well, first of all, I I've really I've enjoyed Quibi a lot um, during the quarantine. Um, I just started watching Kirby Jenner. Uh, oh my God, okay. he's ridiculous. Yeah, it's that is the it's dumbest thing I've ever the seen. The dumbest? My favorite thing. Incredible thing I've Wait, ever have seen. You binge, have you binged Reno 911 because it came Okay, back. Reno 911. <gasps> uh, Re- Reno 911 and Useless Celebrity History came out on the same day. So I have a bunch of screenshots from the Quibi app where it's like Useless <laughs> Celebrity History and Reno and they like kind of like switch it up. I was like, ah. Uh. But Reno 911 is honestly because the show is kind of like the half hour show on Comedy Central was basically in these quick clips. Uh-huh. So it works so perfectly on Quibi and it's just as funny, if so not good. funnier, than it was when it was like originally on. There's some really freaking amazing shows, including Useless Celebrity History. Well, tell us about your show. So Useless Celebrity History is a show um, that um, we, whatever day we have a, a show coming out, um, it'll correlate to some moment in history. Um, and in that, we'll just kind of talk about what it was. Then there's like a skit in the middle of me basically acting like a complete idiot. Um, and then um, that's about it. But we've had some really great people on. So like we've had, um, uh, this is before the pandemic when we were filming. Um, we, we put out our first like eight episodes as like a sneak peek. Um, but we got to chat with like Snooki about, um, Jersey Shore. Um, and, uh, I even got to like, uh, have a video call with Lindsay Lohan, which was so, we needed to know how everything was going in Dubai and it's going well, better than you thinking. Better than you thinking? Okay, it's going worse over here. But also, that made sense. Well, you know what I love about you? Obviously, you're extremely talented, but to me, what's even better is you're so funny, but you're also ridiculous. Like, your humor is just out of control, which I appreciate so much. We see a lot of that. People need to check you out on Quibi. But then people get to see a lot of that in From the Neck Up with Michelle Collins, a new IG live show. I remember I was watching the first one. And I was like, what am I watching? And you both were so ridiculous. No, it takes and a I, genius brain. It's incredible. Think, yeah, it's, that title from the neck up? From the neck up. <laughs> genius. So once they binge watch you on Quibi, yes. what's and up I, with you and your girl, Michelle? So um, every Sunday night at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time, Michelle and I usually just sit and we have a drink and we talk for an hour about what we've been binging over the week. Um, what our plans are for the uh, for uh, the rest of the week coming up, and um, it's so f- I adore Michelle Collins so much. She, if if you haven't um, ever seen her do stand up live, um, I don't know when you'll get to see it again. So I'm like, also, I'm so sorry for you, um, but when you can, you have to just like look it up. Michelle, she's like one of the funniest people. I saw her live uh, maybe a year ago um, at Joe's Pub in New York sobbing, crying, the yeah. funniest thing. Um, but she's so funny. She's the quickest person I've ever met, reference queen. And um, I, uh, she's one of, my, one of my first like comedian friends like in the comedy world. And so I'm just like, I adore her so much. She's, she's just, she is the funniest person I've ever met. So okay, all calm down. You need We're to, not yeah. friends <laughs> Our listeners <laughs> Until need to get, today. To get I told Quibi, you I roller skated. Um, Watch Useless Celebrity History. Then you need to get on IG Live. Watch Adam Rapon with Michelle Collins on From the Neck Up. Also go buy his book, Beautiful on the Outside. It's amazing. Um, Before we let you go, though, uh, do you have a message for all of our listeners who are celebrating Pride from home this year um, about what they mean to you and what Pride means to you? Um, I do. I would say that, you know what, even though there aren't Pride events, I think like we've all spent so much time in quarantine online. So there's going to be so many virtual Pride events that you can be a part of, that you can um, look up, that you can watch. And I think there's going to be a lot of people this Pride season who are going to share their stories. 
because I think that's what social media brings out of people. They want, they want to share more of themselves. Um, so I think that there's going to be a lot of people who share their experiences. And um, in a way, it'll be one of the most intimate prides that we've had because it'll mm. feel a lot more like, the, I think there'll be more kind of one-on-one -on -one experiences. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I want to share some of my experiences too, which means I have to do a deep dive through all of my photographs and find this one photo of me wearing two polos at once with both the collars up. Yes. Um, Wait, that was a look, honey. Hollister and Abercrombie were serving that look because I, I did it too them. as a lesbo. Mine were layered, yes. Yeah. Pastel Hot. layered. I would do the same exact thing. Did you thing. roll up the sleeve? So you mm -hmm. could yes. Get the color? I, I told you I have to, and I, I was at the View Mall and, and like, and I, I just remember thinking like, I really, I should really have someone take my picture. And I didn't have a digital camera <laughs> because I was poor. So I had like a flip thing that like did something that like was kind of video and you had to take stills or like, it was a disaster. Adam, I'm going to be real with you. I rolled up my sleeves right before we, I'm wearing gym shorts on the bottom half. I rolled I up my it. sleeves because I wanted to look cute for you. I used Listerine before this. I was like, it's Adam Ripon. He's so adorable. I better mouthwash Listen, for he's a Zoom been so call. excited all day. He was like, oh, I love him. Love. And I was like, well, we better get that interview of a lifetime then. Oh, we, wait, uh, but I love you guys. I'm, this is fun. We love, we're you, having are, so much fun. Are you out here? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, after this is all over, we all have to have a cocktail at some point, somewhere, or a little kiki, whatever it is you're down for. Please, we um, would love it. And we'll, yeah. wear, uh, we'll, wear, we'll wear our polos and we'll double stack them. <laughs> Please. Um, I will say before you go, if there's somebody listening right now who's afraid of coming out, I, it, you know, you're the epitome of following your dreams and making it happen no matter what people thought. So what advice maybe could you give somebody who uh, is trying to come out or, or just trying to live a very authentic life for this Pride season? Um, I think that uh, one, I would say everybody is focused on their own shit. So as much as you think people are worried about, about you and what you have going on, they're a thousand times more worried about themselves and what they have going on. Mm. Um, you should think about the kind of experiences that you want to have in your own life. I think if you're, you feel like you're in a safe space you have friends that you know that you love. The ones that are always there for you, the important people, is this is going to mean absolutely nothing to them. Whether you're coming out as bi, gay, trans, whatever, it's going to mean absolutely nothing because they've seen who you are on the inside and they love that. And they're going to want to be there for you. They're going to want to support you. And when you do come out, there is this whole other community and family of people that you don't even realize. You don't know them, but you've gained them as friends that you can go anywhere and you can kind of make eye contact with these people and you just, you know it. And you know that like you're on my side. And um, it's a really amazing experience to gain this whole family and this community. And it, it, you truly walk into every experience with 50 pounds off your shoulders, which if I could do it again, I would love to get 50 pounds off my shoulders now after the way I've been eating. But, <laughs> but it, it truly does feel like there's a lightness in the way. You, you, you worry less about what other people think because you realize it doesn't really matter. What matters is how you treat other people, the, the way that you go into the experiences that you want to and that you're making the most out of all of the situations that you're presented with that's what matters nothing else does i adore you that was amazing and beautiful and such a good reminder even for me we are we are a little community we could just make eye contact and we're like hi i'm here i've got you you know isn't that funny it's yeah. just like it's like a sixth sense yeah. you look you can be somewhere i rem i was um you know i um where what i was i was like you know at a target like uh yeah. a few like I guess months ago, I feel yeah, like I've like three in different days, years or yeah. And, um, you know, you're just in line and there's like this one girl in, in front of me and I, you know, she's, you know, whatever she's doing her own thing. And we, we like, she turns around and we kind of make eye contact yeah. for a second and we both smile. And it was just sort of that moment of like, Oh, this is the gay line. Yeah. <laughs> so that was either that was either two weeks or two years ago. You're not sure, but somewhere in that time frame. Girl, I will either, tell you. Yeah. I text my cousin Betsy happy 40th birthday yesterday. Her birthday's June 26th. So A I, month I early. 
<laughs> that's yeah. amazing. That's where we're at. Half the time we're like, welcome, welcome back on this beautiful Thursday. And then our producer's like, it's literally Monday, you guys. Like, do it again. Oh, it's ble- I, I, my favorite thing, what I, I said yesterday was that like, you know, because Memorial Day we had off. Um, I, uh, it was Tuesday and I went, oh my God, there are just not enough days in the week. Even though like my weekends look exactly <laughs> like my week. I know. I understand where I was coming from. <laughs> Never had more more time, but yet yeah. still need more of it. Well, yeah. Listen, we love you. There's not enough time with you, but please, you're welcome on our show anytime, whenever. Please let us know whatever you're doing. Uh, make sure you guys watch his new Quibi show, Useless Celebrity History, and you can see on IG Live from the neck up with Michelle Collins. Adam, we love you. Thank you so much. Your messages were beautiful. You thank you. And thank you for being so fierce and speaking yeah. for our community even years ago. You're just incredible. Yeah, stay safe. I will. Bye, guys. Thanks so Bye, much. Bye, babe. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for all notifications from Radio.com. While you're at it, why don't you check out some of our other great videos?